Hello everyone. Our project this semester was creating a working convolutional version of the cascade correlation architecture. The layout of our presentation will be as follows. First we will explain why this topic is worthy of further exploration. Then we will touch on prior work and explain our own approach. Finally we will discuss the results of our efforts. So, what is the motivating problem? Training a neural network is a non-trivial task. There are several problems that arise in training such as moving targets, vanishing gradients, non-convex optimization, and architectural guesswork. These are classic age-old problems in the field of neural networks. In fact, in 1990, the Cascade Correlation Architecture, or CASCOR, was proposed to solve all these problems. This learning algorithm takes a cascaded approach to forming a neural network where new hidden units are trained and added one at a time, after which the unit's weights are immediately frozen, which causes each training step to be strictly convex. Units that are maximally correlated with the residual error are added so the error is reduced at every stage. CASCOR solved many novel problems of the day using fewer neurons than state-of-the-art systems. We recreated some of these for our project. It was also able to solve considerably difficult problems such as the double spiral. Unfortunately, the original CASCOR did not address applications requiring convolution. One approach of applying CASCOR to CNNs was introduced in 2018. Deep Cascade Learning, or DCL, attempts to solve the problem of vanishing gradients in CNNs by keeping all trainable parameters close to the loss function. In DCL, you specify the architecture you'd like to create, and the network is then trained from the ground up, layer by layer. Here we see the first layer and output block of the network being trained. After a specified number of training epochs, the first layer's weights are frozen. The next layer is added according to the hyperparameters specified by the user. Similar to the first layer, this layer is trained for a given number of epochs. Then the second layer is frozen, and this process repeats itself until the architecture is complete. Note that the trainable parameters are direct predecessors of the loss. Since the gradients only have to propagate through a simple MLP, the author suggests that DCL keeps the gradients from vanishing while learning meaningful features. DCL was compared with VGG16 on the CIFAR10 dataset. This plot shows the accuracy obtained from each successive layer for the two architectures. While DCL has success with early layers, the gains from adding more layers diminish. Next, we'll talk about our approach. Our implementation of convolutional cost score is an extension to the traditional cost score. Before we create a hidden unit, we first need to produce some error for the hidden unit to correlate with. One simple way to do this is to use a fully connected layer that connects flattened image input to the number of classes. During the training phase, each hidden unit output a 2D feature map as well as a scaler, which allows us to measure how well the output of the hidden unit can correlate with the arrow. SGD is used to backpropagate the negative of the absolute value of the correlation. We use this method to train a number of candidates and select the candidate that has the highest correlation with the arrow. After training each unit, we install the candidate by freezing its weight and forward passing the output of previous units through the new unit. During the evaluation phase, a fully connected layer is appended to the output of the last unit, and we train the layer to evaluate the classification performance. Training and installing hidden units are repeated until either the desired number of hidden units have been added or the classification accuracy has reached the threshold value. It is important to know that we could vary the number of filters, kernel size, and strength, etc. as a hyperparameter of the hidden unit. We could also vary the way how each hidden unit is connected to the previous units. It could either be sequentially like a traditional CNN or that has skip connections similar to ResNet or concatenate connections or even dense connection to all previous outputs. For now, we wanted to talk about the result. Um, for the baseline comparison, we actually used the VGG16 and CFAL10 dataset. VGG16 is a very deep convolutional network, which is really large. We have a, about 33 million trainable parameter, and we use the optimizer SGD and the cross entropy loose for the loose function. And for our convolutional cast core network, with the CFAL10 data set, um, we're able to increase the accuracy as our um, stage increases. However, it wasn't a higher increase in accuracy within a more layer. However, we were able to reach monotonic decrease on the loose in within the increase in stage. For the conclusion, we were able to implement the novel version of the convolution version of the cascade correlation algorithm. However, the performance didn't come up as we expected, but our model behaved closely resembled the deep cascade learning system. The output block initially provided an OK classifier, and while adding convolution layer improves the result, the initial output block still has a better related performance. Lastly, we want to thank Dean Ardalucci for his advice, guidance, and his code. Also, we want to thank our TA mentor, Yangxia, for their feedback. 
Thank you.